Hey guys, and welcome to the Sun Coast uh, Sunshine Coast preview. And I've got uh, Nick Meredith, our special guest and mounting yard mail expert. How you going, mate? Yeah, good, good. One of my favourite meetings of the year. This one, I went to the initial, sorry, inaugural uh, race meeting at this track. I wagged school in grade twelve and um, went along to it was on a midweek. So uh, yeah, yeah this is oh home. wow. Home hey. turf for me, home turf for me. This <laughs> yeah, I, I was having a look at the card and I was thinking there's a lot of good mounting yard male races and horses that I think you got a good feel for as well. So, I mean, I like some off the form and if it could match up with your Mountie Yard Mail on Saturday, um, we could be in for a bit of a fill up. Uh, it's a, good, it's a good, um, good venue to look in the yard too here. There's some good vantage points. Yeah. Uh, so, and it's in the sun. Some of the tracks, you know, half shade and all that sort of yeah. thing. Eagle Farm last week was awful. But uh, this one's a good one. So, yeah, it's a good one. I like getting here. So when the sun's on the horses, you get an even better gauge about um, their condition. So well, you get a better look. You can see yeah. muscle definition in that better. Yeah. Uh, and but if it's cloudy, it's all right. But when it's dappled light like it was last week with trees and that, it, it's like uh, – it's it's. A, I find it a little bit more difficult. probably doesn't worry everyone, but I, I prefer a nice sunny day to have okay. a look at it for sure. Yeah. Beautiful. So we're in uh, uh, Rail True. Uh, how? Yeah. What kind of pattern are you looking for? Oh, it should be pretty fair. Uh, should be able to – Sunshine Coast is quite a unique track. It's got a really big crown on it in the middle. Um, if you ever get to go there, it's um, it's really pronounced. I don't know of any other track I've seen like it. Uh, it I don't really want to be the inside two or three horses in the straight. Uh, that yeah. can be a little bit ordinary. Um, out in the crown is uh, where I like to be coming down the home straight, but you don't want to be the other side of the crown, if you know what I mean. You can get too far out. So – I'm okay. doing pretty fair. You should be able to run on, no problem. It's a nice big track, long straight. Yeah. You should be able to run on. But, yeah, I don't want to be hard fenced. But I can guarantee you there will be a few clowns that stick hard fence uh, yeah. and completely give their horses none tomorrow because it happens every year there. Beautiful. So uh, it's that sort of suits me because um, sort of mid, mid barrier draws running line is optimal for, uh, position sort of thing. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Mm. Yep. No problem at all with that. Uh, race one, uh, 1,000 metres for, um, for two-year-olds. And uh, do you have an opinion here? Uh, oh, 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 look, I don't. <clears throat> the trainer of the top and the odds-on favourite, I'm, I'm not a, a huge fan of. But when he does um, have a good day, it's at this is his home track. Can be a little bit horse for courses, this one. The locals yeah. tend to do pretty well here. He looks very hard to beat off his run at Ipswich where – he was really given none um, and, and, and charged through the line. The interesting runner for me is the two, the Sonic Boom. I mean, he ran in uh, he ran in a Blue Diamond. Uh, he won a, won a Blue Diamond Prelude on his first start. His trial was quite nice. I didn't mind his trial at all. So I, I think he's a chance. The, the, the one of Sweeters in there, Femme Fatale, which is unbeaten, got a bit of query about it at the, the trip. I think that they'll be might be finishing over the top of it. So I'll, I'll probably steer away from it, but I'm probably not going to be taking red figures either about the top of good, but um, it's it's clearly the one to beat for mine. Yeah, I, I'm keen on it, mate. Um, it, the, there was just that one little question mark of the 12 back to the 1,000 um, when you're not going to be a map positive horse. But, I mean, it's got that victory over the 1,000, the previous start, which was super dominant. The sectionals were good. So I don't think it's a problem. And you know what I'm really liking? I'm liking the small field. Because, yeah. he, you know what I mean? And you're saying as far as the track pattern or we're both saying as far as the pattern is concerned, it could be in the absolute optimal spot. And it's sectionals that it ran late there. Like like on, on the meeting, um, a two-year-old running yeah. those kind of top splits for the last 400 metres, if it does that when it's not far off them in this small field tomorrow, I don't see how they're going to hold it off. So well, that, I, I'm happy to get involved. Saying that, you are right. There are some interesting runners there, aren't they? The Sonic Boom did some stuff and then dropped off. Yeah. Um, I, I only gave the trial a pass mark. So, okay. Yeah, I, th I, thought um, it was, I thought it was sound enough, um, particularly yeah. going into 1,000 metres. Yeah. Uh, I just look the the femme fatale. I'm not sure what's going to happen there, but I just think there might be a couple a bit strong for it late. It's yep. probably going to lead. And I, I'm not so sure that might be the the optimum place to be. But um, yeah, look, I think the favourite will be a pretty firm favourite based on what we've seen so far. And his win when he did win at the Sunshine Coast was pretty impressive. So yeah, 
Yeah. Sure. And the times and sectionals line up with him as well. Anyway, it's interesting. It's more, I suppose it's more about, I mean, that's the bet you're looking for and it's more about what price you're willing to take. And, you know, another tick from the yard there could um, enable us to take a little bit shorter as well. Absolutely. Uh, race two, 1,800 metres. What have you got? Uh, this is the first of my $33 here, Gord. I just, it's just average horses. Um, I'll be interested to see how a few of them parade, but I, I'm, I'm, something's going to really have to stand out for me to get involved here. I, um, they're just average horses. Not A lot of them not in great form, so it's it's just not a betting proposition for me. Well, it's funny because um, we're, we're of a similar thought process there too because I went through, I started the race book order and I put a pen, I put a pen through them, I put a pen yeah. through them and by the time I got to 12 and I put a pen through every horse, I had to go back to the top and start again and I thought the only one, it, it's never going to be a bet for me, but the one I ended up finding on top was this favourite warp speed just because it's early preparation. That was all, yeah. all right, return to racing. But it's never a bet for me, mate. 41 starts, six wins. That's not my kind yeah, of horse. Just, um, they're just, yeah. um, you know, you just go break back in those horses. They just got, you know, they're exposed. These horses are exposed and the exposed form is not much good. So, no, leave me out. Yeah. Beauty. And let's move on to race three over 1,200 metres. And... um. I, I I found this difficult, but there's a horse I really want to ask you about. So, uh, what did you find? Uh, I found this race really tricky. Uh, it was a bit like the last one. I I had a little a bit of trouble with a few of these um, races early in the meeting. I like it later on, but um, one of the things got a chance that it's it's going to be a reasonable price is the six Enterprise Mia. Uh, I don't mind it as a horse, and I, I really like the trainer as I say on here every week, and I love the trainer with his horses first up. Uh, the horse has got a bit of ability. Um, it's going to be around the $9 mark, somewhere around there. Depending on how it parades, I, I could see myself having a small bet there, but not too much apart from that. So what have you found? That's the horse. Oh, is it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. $9 to find out. A trial like that. And a trial against some decent horses in um, yeah. Roman Oris and Matawatapi. And the, the times were good in the trial as well. It was a dominant victor. Um I know it's got five starts first up for only two thirds, but if you interrogate those runs, I think there's a little bit more um, yeah. um, to it than that. And if you notice its trials before its previous preparations weren't like that trial no. that it just did then, you, you just mentioned that you're keen on this stable being an early preparation stable. Very um, much. Geez, I'd like it not to be out of one, mate, but um, you know we can't get everything. Yeah, um, um, that that might be an issue, but look, that's not to say that you can't lead here and just come two or three off in the straight and, and that's not optimum ground as well. So, uh, yes. as long as they, you know, we, we, there's always vagaries with track. As long as they don't go out and just go bang and and pretend they're a greyhound all the way down the straight, I think that it should be okay that, you know, there's, there should be enough knowledge, particularly by this, you know, we're three race, two races in there. You should have a, safely people have watched the first two races and this training partnership, they certainly will. Uh, yeah. yeah. They're pretty clued in. So they will make, if there's some pronounced track bias, they'll make sure that their horse is ridden for it. Uh, and another question there, how do you handle C. Graham up there? Ah, uh, yeah, look, it's not in the, not in the, the top group, but... Um, but backable is what you yeah, suggest. Yeah, yeah, look, I'm, I'm certainly not going to say no. I think she's on one later in the day that I've actually, um, her claim has been a, a real advantage for me in, in um, wanting to back the horse. So, look, she's not... She's not elite by any stretch of the imagination, but um, she's certainly not the worst. And uh, just a comment, because obviously we know him because he was the assistant to um, uh, Bjorn Baker down here, this um, uh, Jack Bruce. I think his name's Jack. But yep. Yeah. Um, how do his horses parade? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. pretty good. He's making a bit of an impact, actually. He's um, They had a they had a go at one on uh, Eagle Farm on Wednesday in the second race. They It was off the map, but... Uh, but no good. It was interesting to pluck that race. If you just go and have a look at race two Eagle Farm on Wednesday, I backed the, the winner the day before at $3.20. He got into a $1.85 10 minutes before the start and started $4 on Betfair. I hope you kept on clicking the blue button, mate. <laughs> no, I, I, um, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> and it duly won, you know, back to drift. But um, there was a real go on one of Jack Bruce's and, um, I think from memory it, it ran a place, but uh, it didn't get the the result they wanted, obviously. But um, yeah, no, look, he's fine. I've got no problem at all with his horses. He's um, I think he's a pretty ambitious young fella. Um, yeah. 
And uh, yeah, nice to see someone like that in the ranks up here. Uh, Beauty, uh, let's move on to race four over the thousand metres. And uh, what have you got? I am going to have a bet here. Uh, the toppy golden boom. I just think he's a superior Jeez, horse. We've, we're going to stop doing shows together, mate. We, oh, we've got to start deliberately disagreeing with each other or something. This is going to get boring. <laughs> I did yeah. suspect you How, might why do you like it? Yeah. I did suspect you might have this one good. Uh, <laughs> oh, look, I think he's just a superior horse to these. I mean, there's not much below him. Uh, look, the, the weights, I don't think he's too harshly in. I, I haven't got a real problem with that. I think he's just on ratings. He's clearly superior to the rest of them. Uh, I couldn't really find anything that I wanted to back to beat him. The distance is perfect. The track's perfect. He's two from two here, two from two for the distance. I just can't see any reason not to back him. Uh, I don't know what price I'm going to get. Um, I was a bit surprised at the price they put up. I think it's probably because of weight. People are a little bit scared. But um, yeah, he's, he's coming. He's obviously shortened up a bit now. Uh, he's into like 240 now and that with the oh, weight. Oh, really? Shit. Okay. Yeah, I've got I, I old just, price here, so he must have been backed in the last hour yeah, or so. Yeah. yeah, he has because I um when I did my, when I did this race, he was three dollars twenty. So yeah. they they whacked him. There's obviously there's been a couple have come out, but nothing that I thought was any chance of beating him anyway. So yeah, at this stage, he's definitely a bet for me, Gord. He's a nice horse. Like a lot of these Spirit of Booms, they all look like Spirit of Boom did. They're nice, well conformed horses. So yep. He's a bet for me at this stage. And it, it, it'll be a good uh, Mount Yard mail race as well, too, because there's a couple of early prep first uppers down the bottom here that um, um, you'll probably see whether they have a chance or not. Um, off off form at the moment, they don't even get close to Golden Boom. And you know what I love, Nick? That he's he's left the senior rider on. He hasn't bothered about yeah. trying to claim. You know, that's a, I love that. I love yeah. it when they do that. Uh, it lines through red card, spacewalk, et cetera. That's yeah. too good for this. It's and, clearly superior to the rest of them, yeah. And another thing too, tongue tie goes on, which is, okay, I, it's a little bit scary for me. Yeah. But but back in distance tongue tie on is actually a tick for me. Yeah, but, I'm not surprised they've left the senior jockey on. Uh, it's pretty strong will display. Um, so I'm not surprised by that. And the tongue tie is interesting. Um, don't know what he's doing there. The horse himself was, he's, he's just going keen and shaking down a little bit, but I, look, I don't see it as a negative with him. Um, he's, uh, he's had it on. If he hasn't had it on, he's still been racing well. So yeah. 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 I, I, for me, I, I, I'm, I'm always a little bit cautious cause I'm thinking, you know, breathing problems, et cetera. But I mean, yeah. if you do tend to have a little bit of a breathing problem and as you say, this horse has been running well anyway. Yep. But if you do have a little bit, coming back in distance is a lovely thing, you know, because if yeah. it's less significant, the less distance you have to run. If you are do have a slight um, sort of like a, a obstruction in your uh, wind area. Yeah, no, I'm really keen on Golden Boom and it's lovely. Wear. And by the way, Gay Waterhouse reckons that um, Tongue Tie is one of her most positive, important gear changes. She um, okay. is keen on it. So, yeah. Um, it's that's interesting. Yeah. Well, look, I'm at this stage. I'm certainly happy to um, have a bet on Golden Boom. We'll see what happens on race day. And if you get look, I'm, I'm not going to be taking red figures, uh, but I don't think we'll get into red figures. I, I think we'll still be able to get on with the the sixty and a half. So um, yeah, keen to bet there. Yeah, you've got some lightly raced winners down. You know, in in the middle of the um, numbers there and down the bottom that won't blow too much. So I don't okay. think there's any need to rush in two forty. Is what I'm saying. No, I wouldn't be either. A friend of mine um, owns Vodka Martini, the 13. Uh, they do have a bit of an opinion of it, um, and it'll, it'll go pretty quick over the 1,000. Uh, but, yeah, it's a, it's a big class difference between it and what Golden Boom's been doing. Yeah, uh, weighted accordingly as well, but, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, um, yeah, no, I'm, as, you know, the risk of repeating myself, pretty keen to play here at this stage. Definitely. Uh, race five, 1,400 metres. Yeah, keen to play a bit left field here too. Uh, it's um, a horse that I've got a bit of time for. It's not hasn't got a great winning record or anything like that, but I, I think she's a chance at around the thirteen dollars, the twelve Petunia. I think she'll get a nice run here. She didn't get a lot of room uh, last start at Ipswich. Um, she'll get a lovely run here in the running line, not too far back. I think she's pretty genuine now. I, I give her a chance. Um, I mean, the obvious one is TikTok Boom, the two. I mean, it's running the Stratty last start. Um, it was beaten. Was it beaten five lengths, I think, like that in the Stratty? But that's clearly superior form to to most of what, what most of these have been doing. Um, 
you're obviously going to get on there because it's got the weight and it's drawn out in 18. So you're going to get a chance to, so I wouldn't be rushing in there. Um, but they're the two I'm looking at at this stage, but um, I might have a quite keen to have a little, might be a one by three or just a straight each way on the 12 Petunia. And you're liking that line through Antino, are you uh, as well? Indeed. I am indeed. Yeah. Uh, the Antino wins while he was outstanding. They were, they were both the races that he won were run at good tempo as well. So I think they're good yeah. form races. Yeah. Uh, and there were, oh, excuse me, there were good horses behind him, horses that we thought were were um, were decent horses. So yeah, I, I like that form line. Um, and he was only two lengths. She was only two lengths off him um, a couple of starts ago, which you know. Yeah. I think Certainly good enough form to win here. So I think pretty good value around the $13. Yeah, that's definitely a horse of interest. Um, as you mentioned as well, I suppose, don't get everything I want there with the fact that um, she is exposed with the, what, 35, 36 starts or something like yeah. that. But it does look the right race for her. But and there's another one here that I think it's the right race for too. And you had a look at it in the yard for us um, last start at Eagle Farm. That's number one mix. And I think, uh, what was your, what, what were you thinking from the yard there, Nick? Let me have a look. Let me have a look. Because it's a, an interesting runner. I, I'm 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 seeing spike in performance from first to second up. I've got a lovely mid prep trial um, to make sure it's peaking for this, and I've got beautiful runs at fourteen hundred meters, and I'm getting nine dollars to find out number one mix. Yeah, um, had a bit. It was it was in good order, but had improvement to come. So yeah. uh, I would think this would be. I'll have a look. Obviously, it's um we try and have a look at all of them, but it's obviously one with a with a chance in the race. Um, so yeah, it hopefully has come on good. Uh, yeah, I because... think I think we found a, a couple at decent odds there that that'll they'll give us give us a chance, and then um and you know a little bit of an extra push from the, the yard later on. No need to rush in with these kind of horses, but um, no. we can we can wait for extra information and then bet. Uh, I kind of feel comfy there. Okay. Uh, let's move on to uh, race six over 2,400 metres. And, um, well, we've got to talk about a horse that we got completely wrong last start, Nick. <laughs> didn't we what? I mean, I when it was all over, I mean, Mediterranean just didn't run well. I mean, it paraded great and just yeah. it was the first horse beat. Um, uh, We're on at good odds. I've got to oh, say that. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and look, we obviously weren't the only ones. It was it was really well supported on the day. And when you look in hindsight, Lindsay's got out to a ridiculous price. And yeah. in hindsight, it should have backed both. Um, could have backed yeah. both. Yeah, it was a mistake, was wasn't it? It definitely it got to a backable price, Lindsay. Yeah. definitely got to a backable price. It looked in great order. It's a nice style of horse. I, I've gone through this race. I keep going through this race and saying, why is it this price? Why, why, is, it, why is it this price? It's been racing clearly superior races against clearly superior horses i know it's a seven day backup but it's not a it didn't look like it was at the end of its prep last time it's only going to be fifth run in um that run last week was almost a barrier trial just set out the back and just trotted up down the straight and and that's the way i think they'll ride it here i actually i got a, a friend up here who's a very good judge who's of the opinion that it's a much better horse if you can let it chase uh let it find its feet and chase and that's certainly the way it raced last week. Uh, I think it's really hard to beat again. Um, the jockey change isn't isn't a plus. Uh, Clark off, Malian on. That's that's not. And Clark is on Zoom on, obviously. Yeah. Um, Zoom on's win was a was a nice win, but was that a pretty biased track that day at Rose Hill, where the fence and yeah, leading? yeah. It, I, for me, I mean, I ended up. I made it one of my bets of the day and had a very good result. But that was its race, and I think um, yeah. this config is. Um, and standard of these horses, uh, I, I'm look. I mean, it's always going to be priced early in these these like short in these earlyish markets, and maybe even stay solid just because of the map position. Yeah. Um. But for me, I thought it was a little bit tradesman like that that last win. Although they put a margin on the third horse. I mean, we know what Bold Mac is. The horse that came second. I mean, it's it's well exposed, and it was pretty much going two to Zoom One's one. It was. Um, yeah. I mean, one little thing. I mean, I don't know. Like the way it sort of went through the line wasn't suggesting to me that twenty four hundred meters was going to be ideal either. But you know, Gay going up in distance is a really positive uh, variable. So yeah, there's a I mean, few but... yeses and nos about the horse. But yeah, but yeah, if there's yeses and nos, you can't take that price. No, you can't. No, you can't. Look, I I suspect it'll get out on the day. Uh, I think people have have had their bets early on it. But I. I 
I'm not sure what to do with Lindsay's price wise. I, I really don't. Um, I got as I said, I looked at it half a dozen times and I couldn't work out why it was the price it was. Um, I thought it would. I had it shorter than that. Uh, the two desert icon. Well, I mean, it had every possible chance in the Ipswich Cup. Every yeah. possible yeah. chance you could ever get. Um, a few of these have got a question mark at twenty four hundred. I think they're they're really they've exposed at the distance and they they've never won at it. I think it's. It's one of Mark's big pearls, isn't it? The 2400, best 2400 metre form is 2400 metre form. So, um, And there's not many horses that tick that box here and Lunsies is one of them. Uh, he is. And I think that's a query about him because I reckon last start he was, he was, he'd had enough the last hundred. It's just the rest, the ones behind him were just going so poorly. And yeah, that's, yeah. That, that, did, his, did his win look good because the rest of them just went really poorly because... I think Spirit Ridge off the top of my head runs second and it was clearly in need of the run, which just makes me think the others went awful. London Banker, who ran well in the Ipswich Cup, was out the back. Um, it was just one of those races. I don't know if it will stack up, but um, provided Lunacy's looks well and parades well on the, on the seven-day backup, um, it's probably going to be my bet here. I, I'm, I'm, well, I'm surprised that it's not favourite. Mm. Um it's definitely a bet for me, and obviously, obviously for all the reasons you've mentioned. But another thing too is that this horse—I mean, I've always thought this horse had ability, but was a bit of a non-winner. You know what I mean? Good runs, but never getting the job done because it had been a considerable number of nice seconds. And <clears throat> now it's actually got the dominant win over on the board over the twenty-four hundred meters, which ticks the Mark Lamborn thing, um, and. That that could be a springboard to just own a race like this, which I think is very weak. And Nick, I mean, if if without a fight is as good as you and I think it might be, yeah. those lines are looking far stronger than anything else in this race, aren't they? You know, well, so... they are. I'm against the Ipswich Cup form. Uh, I'm I'm pretty much I'm against that a lot of the form on that day. Actually, I just it doesn't sit too well with me. Some of that form um i'm more interested in what's been the winter carnival form around eagle farm and as you said i think we think without a fight's a serious horse uh and this horse um it took all of without a fight to get past him one start so um yeah, yeah look i'm probably with him at this stage the, what, the only one I, I might back i thought was a really good run last time in the brisbane cup was warning I, i'm sorry that i'm interested i don't think i'll be betting because he's a bit of a nonny but um he's one that's certainly going to be strong at the end of 2400 that was a great run last start. Um, it was. It was I'm just starting to think there. that he needs he needs 3,200 or above, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it was a good run last start. Yeah, it was. He, he was he was probably the the run of the that race. But um, yeah. If I, if Lunsies doesn't look great, I, I won't play. But if Lunsies look well, I'll probably be playing there. Beautiful. Uh, race seven over the 1600 meters. Yeah, keen to play here. Uh, I'm pretty keen on the two soothsayer. Uh, I think it gets a lovely run. I thought you look at its last run. It's um, it's in, it was with some seriously good horses. Uh, that was um, with Yellow Brick uh, and Red and Ear, yeah. and Red and Ear, who you know a lot of people there was a lot of criticism of the Red Yellow Brick ride in that race. Race, we don't need to go over that again. But um, <laughs> Sue Say was excellent. Uh, Red and Ear is obviously flying at the moment. It's in the, it's the best form it could be. So. I'm pretty keen to play here on Sooth Say. I, I can get 370 still, which um, is a bit better than I, I thought I was going to get. So, um, and I've got a comment. I don't really care about breeding all that much, but number 20, um, I'm just not sure why it's here. It's half, it's Winx's half sister. Um, it's had one start at Geelong, one a maiden at Geelong, and now they've thrown in the, really in the deep end here. Now it's, it's super valuable, Philly. Uh, why? Why are they? Why are they going here second up? It's they must obviously have an opinion of it. Uh, the trainers are no fools. It's getting a run now. Um, so yeah, I'm just I'll be interested to have a look at it. But on ratings, she's she, she's way off them. But um, I'm interested to see that they've thrown it in the deep end here too. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, getting that um, getting that group. Um, victory next to your name from a breeding or value perspective is um. Let's just say this horse isn't running to win just for the prize money. <laughs> no, exactly. Look, look, if it can get in the placings here, um, obviously that's huge for them. Yeah. Um, actually, the one I was going to ask you about, Gord, is the four, Grabini. Yeah. Uh, thoughts on it? 
Well, I mean, I would have liked maybe, I mean, you know, it's an interesting preparation. We're getting late Ryan and Alexio where a sort of a bunch finished win last start, but the horse is flying, yep. but it's yet to prove itself in this grade. Um, I've got to give it a chance because, I mean, I've backed it. I've backed it its last three starts and it is flying and um, and it's got Sydney form, although it's B grade Sydney form. Yep. But the interesting thing was that man behind the money um, mm. who, it, who it beat last start, I was at having dinner with its owner last night, um, Hungarian restaurant in the eastern suburbs. Uh, oh. Lovely. Yeah. Bit of yeah. Bit of goulash. You know, <laughs> it's the Jewish com- community of the eastern suburbs. It's their go to yeah. restaurant. <laughs> and um, he owns Huerta as well. Oh, and, okay. uh, yeah, and he was um, saying that they've got quite an opinion of Man Behind the Money, which maybe that's slightly Frank Scrabini a little bit more, saying that I think with the question mark about the map from 18 and its price just seems a little bit too short to me, but it's a horse of interest. And the other one, which I will be backing, although it's got map question marks as well, but at least it's longer, is this number seven Crafty Eagle. Now, uh, I was disappointed with its run last start. But getting up to 1,600 metres, third up for Thompson, that just looks right to me. Um, and its win first up was absolutely dynamic. Glenn yep. reckons it's one of the best horses. It's a beautiful horse to look at. Okay. And if you notice, the horse that it absolutely owned f- first up was a horse called Otelli, which mm. ran yesterday. Um, wrong part of the track led and absolutely destroyed them. So it's looking like that's franking and it's lightly raced, might have some upside. You've just got to mildly forgive that performance last start. So I thought Crafty Eagle was another uh, horse of interest. So there's four sort of interesting horses to play around with in that race. Now, the 1600 metres is a bit of a tricky start. Uh, they get onto, they come out of a shoot, but they get on a bend uh, reasonably quickly. And then it is a decent long run down the, the back straight sort of thing though. And, Look, it's going to get running line, you'd think, somewhere. And if it's what we have seen in this carnival is three wide with cover is certainly not a bad place to be. Yeah. I think I think our jockeys are getting more experienced in okay, I'm three wide cover. I'm just going to sit here and let my horse be comfortable. Yeah. Uh, particularly on some of these. Rather stuff. than tagging to try and yeah. go back further and get in. Yeah, I think we're we're getting our jockeys are getting a lot better at that, just keeping the horse comfortable, breathing and Look, quite often it's a good place to be. You're not getting held up, and when you want to make your run, you can make your run. Yeah, yeah. Interesting race. Uh, race eight, 1,400 metres, uh, and I hope you can help me here. Uh, let me have a look at my notes here. I've got one I've Got one a bit of left field that I'm going to have a look at here. Um, <clears throat> the cup, the, there's about there's four I like in the race that I give a hope to. Uh, Munamex obviously got to be a chance. Uh, his form since he's been up here has been excellent. Uh, you really can't fault any of his runs. He's been in great order since he's been up here. A lot of horses, when they've been up here a month, six weeks, they just continue to thrive. The weather's been great up here. I think it was 27 the other What about day. the distance, Nick? Strange prep 15, 16, sorry, 16, 16, 16, 15, 16, back to 14. Um, yeah. Yeah, look, it's not it's not your traditional. Oh, great! It's, you know, it's gone up in distance. This is it's it's not its grand final. Good, put it that way. Yeah. I mean, they tried to get it into a strad break that didn't work. Uh, but look, I, I think it's um, it's a decent animal. It, it's win when it did win at Eagle Farm was was really impressive. Uh, I give it a chance. Uh, I think months is the fourteen. Aureus Angel has been running and running on really well. Uh, don't love the draw being out of the one. I would have liked it to be in the running line somewhere. I'm um, just yep. not sure where, where it goes to there. The jockey Martin Harley, I don't mind him. Uh, Irish guy, he's he mightn't be the prettiest on him, but it, on them, but he's pretty pretty strong. So I don't like him. And the one that's a bit left field is the 18 Fleetwood Macco. I didn't mind its run first up off a pretty average parade. I'll tell you what, you do like this stable, don't you? Yeah, I hey? do. I, I, do <laughs> I, I give him extra ticks, but it didn't. For theirs normally parade really well, and it didn't parade that well. I thought it was average in the cape and that. And um, its trial was pretty good before that, but I was a bit turned off by the parade. It's $31. Um, I think it's got a rough hope here, and I, I certainly won't be losing if it wins, put it that way. Well, there's no superstars in this race, no. or um, even some of the better ones. I don't think the setup looks like exactly what I'm looking for, so um, I don't have a problem with finding something wide there, but 
normally when I hit races like this, I tend to just have a nap, Nick, and freshen up for for for, for betting somewhere else. Because nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it's um, there's plenty of races to bet on, guys. You don't need to bet on in them all, and I found that a little bit tough. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to race nine over the thousand meters, and uh, this is an interesting race. This is an interesting race. I'm quite keen to play here on the toppy goals, bro. Uh, I think the setup is is good for him. Uh, track perfect, distance perfect. Um, with the claim gets down to fifty nine, I think, which is uh, gee, that's pretty luxurious against some of these. Um, I'll give him a, a good chance. I think I'm going to get seven dollars, six fifty seven dollars. Always race races well at the track, so pretty keen to play him at this stage. A couple of others with chances, obviously, but um, I'm probably going to oppose the three, the favourite. Uh, it paraded absolutely at its top first up. It was it was really good. I, it certainly can't improve off that. Um, I'm just not a huge fan of the stable. Uh, but also you've got you've got like KWT off for the apprentice on as well. I mean that's not 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 the happiest place. Um, no, no. I mean, I, I, look, there's not the horse can win, but it, you know, I, it's just not one of my horses, and it's not a stable of mine that I really like. It's got to be everything in its favour, and I've got to be getting a good price to get involved. And so I'll probably be opposing it, but I'm quite keen to play on the toppy Goldsborough. Okay, well, uh, next week we'll just it, we'll, it, it'll either be you or me on the show. Mate, because uh, <laughs> the way things are going here, because isn't it just an easy bet, Goldsboro? Uh, well, I just, it's another one, Gord, I've looked at and I'm a bit surprised at the price. Um, I thought it was, I would have had it a bit shorter than that, but it's got it's got more positives and a lot of the others have got a lot of negatives. That's the way I looked at it. You know what the massive thing is? A thousand metre is for thousand metre horses. Uh, it's a different race altogether. I agree. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, the last time this horse run won was over at Sunshine Coast, but over only over the eight fifty. But then yeah. it's run over 11, 12 and eleven. That the runs have all had merit. They're all yeah. against higher standard opposition. And it's going to be far better suited coming back to this track over a thousand metres. It just looks right. Barrier it's six, perfect. plenty of options. Perfect run, perfect run. It's a thousand metre horse. It's one of these horses that. It looks really strong through the line over your thousand. You think, oh yeah, it's a good twelve hundred meter horse. But we know we've seen that a million times that they're just not. I think it's a yeah. thousand. Meter uh, horse. Yeah, that's the no, number one thing that um, confuses trainers. Uh, it doesn't confuse us punters, but uh, yeah. it does confuse trainers. They see runs like that and they go, oh, I can't wait to get it up in distance. And um, that's not necessarily the case, um, particularly when you're betting professionally, you know that that's something to be a little bit more cautious about. Uh, and can I get a comment on Red Ruby, who obviously has track and distance stats, but just, you know, had a long spell there of 40 weeks and um, didn't really do much first up, but it's a horse that, you know, might have some ability. Just um, do, you, do you have a feel for it or did you have uh, notes from the yard or? It was my second picking the race good. I think it was in the wrong part of the track last start. Yeah. Um, so I don't think the run was as bad, perhaps, as it looked. Uh, it paraded well. Uh, first start, it, it, it'll, it'll first up, it'll improve a little bit, I'd imagine, but I'd imagine it'll be close to its top and a thousand metres will be no issue at all. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was my clear second um, pick in the race. <laughs> it's a bit of a roughie down there, number 11, Genzai the Wolf, who every now and then just lobs up over a thousand. He gets a suck run all of a sudden. There was a bit of a push around for him last start. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is significantly <laughs> easier than that. So there's a blowout chance. I think it's him. But um, yeah, I'm quite keen to play uh, on the top of Goldsboro. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, to be honest, it looks like a fantastic betting card. And if we add the information of the Mounting Yard Mail to it, I think oh, you've got me excited, Nick. Eh? I'm, because, I'm well, if we if we get if the ones we like get in at the prices we're in, it's a bonanza. So it, and we probably only need to get two of them to lob when we've had a good day. So bloody oath. And um yeah, I, I mean I I'm obviously keener on some of those uh those shorter ones, which I know is you're less keen in that price range than I am. So um I I like some of those as well. So it looks like a great betting card and I can't wait. And uh, so guys, um yeah, sign up. Um, if you want to ac access Nick's stuff, it's um it's available um through the app and in the chat room, and it's fantastic information. And uh, you want to jump on soon because I think next week um will be the first week where we start um actually charging for it. So take advantage of it now. Sign up and check it out, and um you'll find it incredibly valuable. I think I, people should sign up just for for the chat room. 
There is some, <laughs> some really good judges in the chat room. As, as, as I was saying to you off camera, some of those guys are like pretty serious pros in there and they yeah. just in there very generous with their information because to be honest, they're like me sitting at home in their little office. You need to communicate and it's just a great area where you can. So particularly on these, you know, the, the Thursday meetings and Tuesdays and Fridays and that some of these guys have you can tell they've spent a lot of time doing form on these yep. races. And they yep. as you said, they're very generous with their information. So mm. but apart from what we provide, um what these guys provide in there as part of it is, is pretty invaluable, I reckon. Yeah, it's great stuff. Great community. Yep. Sure. Um, anyway, oh, so you, your best is the last race, is it, Nick, or was it? Um... Uh, my Golden Boom's my best. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think he's my best, but there's quite a few I'm keen to play on Golden Boom. I'll probably have a bit on Petunia at the odds. Um, Luncey's on. I'm, I'm yet to make up my mind, but I probably will be on with Luncey and Susay and Goldsboro. I'm, I'm quite keen on both of those. So, bit of value there. Um, hopefully, we can find one or two and giddy up. Beauty. Thanks, Nick, and good luck, guys. Cheers, good. Thank you.